Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. We're barrel scraping. That's the time of year we are out there in the bottom of the barrel, scraping for content. You're either with me or you're not. I understand a lot of people aren't getting my notifications. It's a dry part of the season. You're watching Johnny and Amber. I get it. We're here regardless at D Neal's. You're going to get your three videos a day and change. They're free. You're over here if you want to support me and get extra content. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We're going to get into it. Matt James... And again, there's always hyperbole. There's always clickbaiting. He lays down what everyone was thinking and calls out the producer manipulation that happened on his season. He says, show something real. He says, this is the reason why the show's not doing as well. The other shows are doing well because everyone's on to you. Everyone knows what the, the, the deal is. Everyone knows that it's fabricated. He says all of this. It's and he, and he doesn't do it in a way where he's bitter. He just lays it out there. This is why This is why um, he, he basically says everything we've been saying literally for over a year, which is why would he give the producers an ounce of a smile, an ounce of charisma, an ounce of energy uh, when it came to the after the final rose, when he knew they were going to, they've already butchered his story. He was like, you know what? Contractually, I've signed the contract. I'll show up. It's like when, uh, when an athlete's at a press conference. They're like, look, I'm here contractually because I have to be but I'm not going to answer any of your questions. And then they ask something and he goes, I don't know. And then that's what, that's what it was. He was like, okay, I'm giving nothing more to you. I gave you everything. You butchered it. This is what you get. We're going to get into all of that. Stick around. It's fascinating. It's worth it. I promise. And also, if you want to come to my show next Thursday, May 12th, stand up comedy, telling jokes, a 30 minute set. I'm doing a half hour, which it's like, you never get to do in LA. I'm doing a 30 minute set in a very intimate crowd. It's going to sell out. We're going to pack the place. Um, it's in Burbank, California. Come to this Thursday, May 12th. If, um, if you guys show up, we'll do something after or whatever, you know, go to a local bar or something like that. All right. So let's get to barrel scraping. Let's do it. Barrel scraping day. So here we are. My other video, how Matt was almost fired from the bachelor. Another great story. Of course, Matt saved all these stories to promote his book. They're all worth it. He's a great storyteller and we're going to get into all the different clips. Here's the first video clip of why he didn't mention Chris Harrison by name, um, in his book, the conversation you had on night one with the host, but you don't use Chris Harrison's name. You don't get into any of the stuff with Rachel. Lindsay um was that a conscious decision of just like not not something that I needed to get involved in at the time like I feel like you kind of just tried to just get through it is how it read to me obviously I wasn't there but no I just felt like we spent enough time talking about that stuff you know it's like I I hate beating a dead horse and like uh everything's played out how it's played out and like there's no need to to go back on it uh, on something that we've talked so much about because Unfortunately, those type of conversations overshadowed, you know, context that I would have liked to have been applied to the season that would give people that would have answered a bunch of questions I had. Okay, so of course, the, the context being the photos emerging of Rachel Kirkconnell's past and the salacious way that The Bachelor didn't address it right away, didn't protect them. He's going to get into how The Bachelor didn't protect him and Rachel, and it's it's just fascinating. It All the dots are connected in this video. All the dots and, and curiosity that we had are connected here. Run, don't walk, and go buy his book. Things that I talked about and discussed and went into in depth in my dates and on group dates and on one-on-ones that never aired. So uh, I didn't want to take any more time to talk about that stuff. I wanted to, to focus on um, themes that I felt that could really help people. And I don't think that <laughs> going back on that would be any help to anybody. So Were you and disappointed if he didn't include this in the book? I was su- it's like, don't be surprised. Of course he's not going to include things that are just going to give people reasons to print stories and do this and do that. He's going to try to sell his book and he's going to finally, finally tell his story through with, you know, with, 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 with his sort of blessing, not the story the producers made. We're, we're going to listen to this right now. The rest is audio. It's worth it. Have a listen. Um, you know, you know, that that's on somebody else like that. That is on somebody else to do. Like, that's not my I'm not going to be the person to be like, I'm calling out the franchise for like, like that's petty. And it's going to come across as petty because like it, it's it's come and gone. And, it, and where you're at is where you're at. So I, I didn't have any interest in that. Uh, I just wanted to, to give context to what I went through and what we went through. And um, there had to be a little bit of, of that in there. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like that would answer this question, but you know, you mentioned the conversation you had on night one with the host, but you don't use Chris Harrison's name. You don't get into any of the stuff with Rachel Lindsay. Um, was that a conscious decision of just like not, 
not something that I needed to get involved in. I mean, okay, so we got that obviously, obviously. And then, all right, 1248, here we go. And obviously, you ended up with Rachel and you guys bonded. You knew you liked her right away. You had so you had a lot in common, but you maybe didn't go there seriously about certain things, or maybe I know we didn't see all of it, but you kind of wrote about how you navigated them almost differently. Um, is there anything you think that you guys could have done differently at Nemecolon that would have made things how it played out? You would have handled it a little differently or do you think it all happened the way it was supposed to? No, I, I'm a firm believer that everything happened the way it was supposed to. And and that comment about the the conversations with about race taking place with, you know, the black women that were there is just is, is unfortunate because, you know, those weren't the conversations that we needed that we needed to have. You know, we we, we understood those things about one another, like maybe in a group setting or maybe um, in a context that provided more light to somebody outside of our, um, you know, our ethnicity. But um you know, I'm not the executive producer. I'm not the editor. So, you know, wow. you can only work with what you've got. And yeah. um, I think that throughout the show, a lot of important things were discussed and addressed that, um, you know, I can't complain about how one or two things happened. So, um, yeah. And the fact, as I've said over and over, the fact that the producers don't put all these extra conversations on the YouTube. I mean, look, there's so much content that we sift through as an audience that there's so many podcasts and, and, other, and other conversations that happen. The fact that the Bachelor producers own the intellectual property for the show, and I'm sure they could get the permission from ABC and all that jazz, to add all these supplemental videos, it doesn't serve their purpose to create whatever storyline they're trying to create. But I think... I always believe the truth is far more interesting and the candle that burns of truth is far more interesting than whatever firecrackers the show decides that they're going to make. It's just like, we're beyond that. We're beyond it all. Show us something. About my life, you'd be like, what? Like, I was really... So this is the most interesting part of the whole uh, interview. So, so if you're obviously still listening, uh, the next three minutes are good. It's gold. Bought in, like, like they thought, like, like I was, I was laying it all out there. I was there. I was really trying to have these women know where I was coming from and what I was about so that when we got to the end of it, there was no shadow of a doubt what they were bringing home to their family and what came with being in a relationship with me. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it really wasn't to answer your question because I had already said it, like I was right. preparing it on TV and when I didn't see it, I'm like, dang, I guess it was too raw. Like, I guess it was too raw for wow. what they were looking for, too raw. which is unfortunate because like when you're vulnerable and you're open about those things, like the little bits that they shared that I was very vulnerable, like hella people resonated with that. They're like, yeah. So when he says it's too raw, it's like, well, the show's protecting the middle class that doesn't want to see a tough conversation. It's like they're by trying to play it down the middle, they've just withered his experience down to, down to nothing real. So like I felt that like, I'm like, it's not that hard of a formula. Like, how about y'all double down on the realness so that like, like people aren't dumb anymore. Like maybe back in yeah. the day, you could get away with like, oh my, like, this is crazy. Like, like now, don't get me wrong, Matt. I, 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 I respectfully disagree that there is an audience out there. I read the comments. That is that we have some dang on morons. I live in our country, but, uh, but I understand the sentiment that we should, you know, comedy plays up to the higher intelligence. You should always go for the joke that plays up to the higher intelligence because you should expect that your audience will get your references. And if they don't, that's their loss in, 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 TV shows like network TV would rather serve you the slop that everybody gets, which, which is kind of garbage. There's been too many books come out. Like there's been too many whistleblowers. Like we're past that. Yeah. Like we're not like, come on now. Like wow. let's, let's be real. Let's and, be real. um, and that's why you're seeing people go watch these other shows because it's like, they're, they're like, they're not tiptoeing around. Like, like, they're like, this is what we're bringing to the table. Love is blind. Love Island, Circle, Are You the One, 90 Day. Like, there's all these shows that aren't tiptoeing around it. Wow. They're like, yeah, like, this is what y'all want. We're giving it to you. So, like, how about you double down, Bachelor, Bachelorette, on, like, the realness, and you, you're straight. Yeah. So it's frustrating because you've got so much, like, so much good stuff there, and you're and you're fumbling the bag. Wow. So, you in a it's like it's like tough love it's constructive criticism it's in it and it's dead on accurate they fumbled the bag at least on his season at afr obviously you and you write about this a little bit but like it came off like you and rachel were kind of cold on screen but then behind the scenes there was obviously still love there we weren't included on the fact that you guys had been talking 
was part of that just because you didn't want to give the show like anymore? Were you just like, let's just get through this? Or was it just the... I was, yeah, same with the beard. It's like, I, mm -hmm. I've i given y'all everything I have. Wow. And 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 I've seen how y'all treated me and, and Rachel through this process. So oh. like, there's nothing else I have left to give to y'all aside from the obligation of being here. Damn! Golly! I've given it all. 100%. I have nothing left to give except a contractual obligation to be here. And people go, well, this goes to prove that he was lying. No, no, no. Don't get it twisted. He wasn't going to share his story and give it away to them. He has the keys to his experience and he's saving it for a book that he's going to monetize. You know, and not just for the money because he's set. He's got money. He's doing the other things. He's got, he's got the influence, right? It's not just about that. It's about control and respect over the story. The story that doesn't just involve him. It involves Rachel, his mom his experience, the, 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 the shoes he has walked his life through that he has already watched be butchered. He didn't expect it to be butchered on episodes 1, 2, 3 to 11 or whatever it is, but at, after the final rose with his two eyes, he saw the show and the bag get fumbled, and he wasn't going to let that happen again. And I think we all have to respect that contractually. Hey, look, we all have bosses we don't like, and sometimes you show up to work, you mail it in, you steal a stapler, whatever you do, right? And, and, he's at, and he, he's at his work, and he's on the last day of his shift. And he says, you know what? I'm not giving you guys shit. And then a year later, his book comes out, and he gets to tell his story. And if that ain't the American dream, <laughs> then I don't know what is. Because this guy was like, F you, got company. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to go on a podcast. The Barrel Scraper is going to recap it. And that's how life's going to go. And that's what he does. Okay, let's finish it up. And that's kind of how we've gone about our relationship. You know, it's like, we're not, you know, hosting group dates. We're not pulling up to these different events because like, <laughs> we're not hosting group dates. Oh boy. I don't think we're going to see Matt on the bachelor anytime soon. It's a one-sided relationship. You know what I mean? Like when, when, when Rachel needed them the most, they were nowhere to be found. You know, when I mm. needed them and whatever, like it was, it was the cold shoulder. So like, wow. God, I can't, I can't, people go, Dave, stop pausing. This is every single sentence he's saying we could do a dissertation on. When they, when Rachel needed them to the most, they were nowhere to be found. They let a 23 and however old she is, they let a young woman deal with a national scandal. And with all of their resources, they were nowhere to be found. Not only were they nowhere to be found, they were waiting there, counting their money for the after the final rose when they could monetize and sell their ads for Dove or whatever the hell they're selling there, you know, some pharmaceutical company. How disgusting. And all they had to do was step in and, 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 and uh, extinguish this flame. But instead, they let the wildfire come about because they knew they were going to make their money back. Uh, we were good on our own. And yeah. uh, like, I don't want to come across as petty because I'm not like, I'm so thankful for that opportunity. And, and to me, Rachel and those amazing group of women, but like, it's, it's unfortunate that so many people are left with that sour taste in their mouth after going through something so cool when it doesn't have to be like that. Matt, he's not coming off petty. Not to me. He's been able to survive this. Whereas others had their character stripped down, had all these other issues but, uh, you know, they ended up not building a following. They didn't get anything out of it. And he's he's been able to turn the tides there. And for the people that understand what he's doing, that they get it. The people that get it, get it. The people that don't, you know, just uh, the, 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 he's not bothered by them. So in this final clip, he explains how he's not judging the people that that ate the slop that they were fed. It's like this. It's like you I'm, I'm not. I'm not mad at anybody for anything they comment because they're taking the information that they're getting and they're processing it and they're dealing with it in real time. And they're only, they're not working with a full deck. They're only, they're only going off the information they're given. So as I'm not surprised that as they get to know myself and Rachel more, that the feeling that they feel towards us changes because, you know, they're getting these crazy messages from the media, from the news that's half baked. That's like, um, you know, uh, painting a picture of who we are and aren't. And um, if anyone cares to figure that stuff out, they can follow us. They can look at our Read content. The they, 
exactly. And and we and we're doing just that. And you guys know, and I know, anybody that follows my channel didn't get that one-sided story. We called this out from a mile and a half away. We knew there was so much more to this, and now we get to see it, and we get to appreciate Matt and Rachel's journey as they do good, as they share their platforms for ch uh, charitable reasons, as they share positive energy, as they share grace for all of the issues that they've been through and open up people's eyes. God, God bless them for that, for coming out of this thing alive. They got burned. They're here to tell the tale. Let me know what you guys think. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal if you want behind the scenes content. I've also got new videos on the Dave Neal Show. One video is hitting 500,000 uh, 500, views today. Dave Neal Show is going to be at 10,000 subscribers by Friday. Everyone's watching are you. Come join the community. More to come. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye, everybody.